<laughs> and a good evening and a very warm welcome to everybody to a Lyceum night call coming to you from the Paul Spiritualist Church on the south coast of the UK. Wonderful gentleman with us tonight. Uh, several recommendations for him came through through uh, contacts that I have. And when we actually spoke online, I just thought, yeah, I, I see why people love this guy. He is such a nice guy. And Jason, sir, you are a certificate holder with the Spiritualist National Union in speaking, demonstrating and teaching, I believe. You're on mute, sir. Okay. How's that? No. We can't hear you, Jason, unfortunately. And now? And now we can. There we go. Like you see? <laughs> what you said before we went live, you said, oh, I'm losing my voice. Well, it, it went a bit quicker than we thought. <laughs> yeah, I think the spirit world were playing around with my microphone there. Yeah, they have a great sense of humour. So to answer your question, yes, yes, and yes. I am uh, I have a certificate in demonstrating, demonst uh, speaking, and and uh, the teacher's uh, certificate. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, always very popular, and um, this ability with your mediumship, was this something that was always apparent from a very early age, or was it something you came into in later life? I, I was always um, in a connection with another world. Um, I think most of my teachers would have said I was dreamy, always uh, looking out of the window, um, imaginary friends, um, trying to um, let my mother know that there's people visiting me at night time from, uh, from the spirit world, but I didn't know they were from the spirit world. I just said there were people. And she told me, go to sleep. You're having a dream. That's all it is. Um, and so that's how it started for me. But, yeah, otherwise, um, yeah, it was, uh, after losing a loved one, um, suddenly I was made very apparent that the spirit world um, was very close. And not only was the spirit world close, but the spirit world let me know that I was a medium. Um, and... That was a bit of a wake up call because I thought I was hearing, I was hearing voices and I was, I was, I was feeling the touch, the touch of spirit after my brother passed the spirit world. And I realized there's more to this life than I could, than I thought there was. And so that began my investigation to find out what is, what can I do with these, with this sensitivity, with these, um, these gifts. And my brother from the spirit world, I believe he actually did push me um, in the right direction. Let's put it that way. <laughs> that That is really interesting because that is um, a very common thread with a lot of the working evidential mediums or philosophers that uh, primarily there was that sensitivity. I remember sitting at the back of classes and I, I was playing in the sandpit at the black of the car, you know, and I think the teachers just went, oh, Savile, get on with it. We're not bothered with you now. <laughs> um, just, yeah, not being present in the time. But again, and like, uh, another common thread is when we go through that process of losing somebody incredibly close to us, that does seem to sort of like kickstart, to jolt the... I'm not sure that's the right way of saying it, actually. Not kickstart it, but just raise it in our consciousness, I think is probably the more apt way of saying it. Absolutely, absolutely. It was, for me, it was... Um, it's funny you used the word kickstart, and it was like, for me, it was like an electric shock um, because uh, my brother, he decided to, he could never keep a secret. So the moment that he got to the spirit world, he couldn't wait to let me know that life continued. Um, so he did everything within his power um, 
waking me up at three o'clock in the mor morning with uh, blasting the song out, Ever Essence, Wake Me Up Inside, which literally did wake me up. Um, <laughs> But it, was, it wasn't it was coming through from my ears. It was actually coming through an energy that was flowing through my body. So it was really confusing because this was something that happened. And he managed to do that to me, my sister, uh, my wife, and um, his girlfriend at the time. He chose his music for his funeral after he passed to the spirit world. Wow. Wow. And that, that's interesting as well, what you say about not hearing through the ears. No. Um, because people who do not work in this field, in their mediumship, I, I sometimes struggle with the language that we use. And we just say it as mediums, don't we? Oh, I hear. Yeah. Um, I wish. <laughs> yeah. I really wish somebody would go in my ear. Oi! <laughs> But we just know it's there. It yeah. is there. It's this physical presence, but it's not going through the eardrum. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, and often uh, in communication, we will say, "Oh," and they're expressing their love to you. They're saying about their love for you, but they're not because we get that emote. You know, we just want to go over there and just give the world's biggest hug ever. Mm because yeah. of that love flowing through us from the other world. You're uh, currently working and living over in Holland. Um, well, living in Germany, um, oh. but, but working in Holland. So that's <laughs> correct. Um, <laughs> yes. And how long have you been doing that? Um, I've, I've done that for many years, um, uh, living, in, living in Germany. I've been in Germany now about 20 years. But I've always been doing some work in Holland, whether it's my mediumship work or, um, or whether it's um, my work as a male nurse looking after people with Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, that's so. I'm, I'm either doing what I'm doing one or the other, but I'm always like to to be able to bring insight into into the nursing profession as well. Mm. And there is a lot of insight to be gained. I've had two experiences of contact with uh alzheimer patients one who had passed but one who was still here and i found that not only fascinating but i thought extremely comforting uh that that person was not bound by the flesh their spirit was free to roam and i just thought you know what that that is an incredibly comforting uh thought for you know alzheimer's disease of the mind mm. a lot of people describe it as one of the cruelest conditions because every day you're losing that person gradually yeah the amazing thing about it lawrence is um people with alzheimer's and dementia they might be losing their physical mind because the mind is actually you know, it's disappearing. There's parts of the mind that are actually physically disappearing. But on a soul level, they're complete. They're a complete yeah. person, um, a complete and complete spirit. Um, so if I was to communicate with them um, as they are now, it's, it's purely through the feelings. And they're highly sensitive. The more that they become uh, in, in, in the dementia state, um, you they can feel me so it's how how i conduct my feelings is how they react and so the communication is not only through words but through feelings just like we communicate with the spirit world really so it's like it's really um it, it's just using the sensitivity um to create create comfort um and and, and some some mm -hmm. very um can be, can be difficult times for them you know. yeah. yeah 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 it is it is uh my heart goes out um and it always just seems this quirk with um conditions of the mind it, it seems like sometimes our strengths in the physical become the things that are turned against us so if we are very strong physically and very active physically the body then starts to betray us for one yeah. of a better experience and if, if you're very cerebrally led um very good friend of mine was a brilliant architect 
Yeah. Uh, absolutely fantastic. His designs were award-winning. Mm. And in a very short space of time, um, physically fine, but the mental process had just gone like ephemera to him. Bless his heart. Yeah. But <clears throat> what I find interesting, um, when we first started out on these online talks and meeting people from all over the world, one thing that came to light that was still a bit of a surprise to us, that in Europe you haven't got the access to spiritualism that we have in the UK. Um, if I drive five miles in a circle around Paul Church, I will come across five other churches. Correct. You know, we've got that, but we haven't got that yet in Europe. And Germany in particular fascinates me. Um, I don't know if you know this gentleman, Dr. Robert Berndt. It rings a bell, but I don't know him. He is a lovely, lovely man. He's right up in the north of Germany. Um, and I was intrigued when he was talking about practicing spiritualism in Germany mm. because they would hire this beautiful play. It looked like something out of Euro Disney. It was just like, wow, <laughs> it was stunning. But yeah. it was selected because it was out of the way because it's still spiritualism, still a bit of a touchy subject. Uh, it's not something you've spoken about so openly and freely as we do in the UK. Is that what you find or different uh, to that? Absolutely. Um, in Holland, they had their own movement of, uh, of let's say, mediumship and phenomena. Um, they had their own movement in what we, what we call in, in Dutch, spiritual verenigingen. Uh, which basically means um, uh, like spiritual groups, spiritual centers. I probably haven't translated that completely correct, but that's what it basically means, where they can um, create groups where they can come together and watch mediumship um, uh, and different mediums will come every week. So similar um, to churches, but then not with the prayer, not with the prayer or the... Um, there'll be a, you know, there'll be an opening with some very inspiring music. Um, there are, there are some that have, uh, that are trying to bring more spiritualism to, to Germany, to, um, um, to Holland as well. Um, and, and it's nice to see, I know there was the first spiritualist church or that was, um, was the, the uh, Spiritualist Church in Amersfoort, and that was through uh, Joker and John Hayton, and they um, they really um, they put spiritualism on the on the map in in Holland at the time, and that had a knock on effect that inspired others who worked in that church to open up similar churches in the same sort of vein, um, so that they could encourage people to come. And experience the prayer, the the inspired words, um, mm. and and the the actual feeling of the mediumship and the healing, just like you would in England. But only I find Holland when I go to a, a um, to Holland to any sort of spiritualist service, there's always um, a little bit more upbeat music. Yeah. Um, and when you come to a spiritualist church in the UK, and I've been to quite a few they'll have hymns and I'm like, oh, how did this hymn go? I need to wrap my brain how we used to sing that when I was back in school. Right. Um, so it's been it's been 20 years in Germany, but before that I was 10 years in Holland. So um, it's been a long time. When I actually got here and realised, I didn't realise that I'd moved away from, from spiritualism and I didn't know anything about spiritualist churches before then. I remember years ago looking at the channel four uh, thing with my mother and she says look at this is a really good medium on television i said mum i don't believe in all that and i think it was mavis patilla or something on channel four or something and i said and she but let's just watch this she's really good yeah mum that's great but i've just got to go down the pub um and so it just was it wasn't it wasn't an interest um that i that i had when i was going through my teenage years when i was um it wasn't until I actually moved as far away as possible from spiritualism 
that suddenly um, my gifts started to work and become more apparent and I, I got a greater interest. And at one time I thought, why, what's the point of being a spiritualist at heart if you're in a place living in a village where nobody believes in this sort of thing, in the area nobody believes in this sort of thing, you got to go at least um, 150 kilometers that way uh, to meet one spiritualist church. There is Danielle and I house that's just down the, she's about, uh, I think it's 40 kilometers away from me now. She's starting to, to bring some movement. Um, but when I first started this, there was, I, I'd have to travel two and a half hours to go to a circle to learn. And I used to drive there do the circle or, or whether it was a courses and then drive back. Yeah. Um, and people are like saying to me, well, you must be mad to do that. I said, no, I've just got this feeling. I've just got to do it. I have to yeah. investigate this, this spiritualism. I have to investigate this, this spirit, this phenomena of mediumship and, and find out what is it all about? This, this is a term that's being uh, used more and more nowadays, and I, I like it. I like terminology that yeah. is descriptive and, you know, just appetite, because we, we, we use the word medium. Well, yeah. are you a healing medium, an evidential medium, a trance, you know? So I do like the descriptors coming in. And when we talk about the phenomena yeah. of spiritualism, you know, we do have that. And not only do we have that, this is demonstrated and shown daily across the UK. Yeah. And that's without now the advent of the um, electronic churches and demonstration. I sat in a dem the... What's today? Saturday. Where am I? Earth. <laughs> 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 I think I might end up under your care. Um, I was watching them... <laughs> <laughs> I watched a dem last night. Uh, I won't mention the medium because I know it'll embarrass them. Mm. Do you know what? I, it was outstanding. It was, <laughs> and you know, when you want the word phenomena yeah. associated with that level of evidence that flowed, um, yeah. it is. It's, 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 and this is what I love. This is my passion within spiritualism is trying to get other people to get that passion as well. You know, well, yeah. not, to, not to sit there watching. That's that's what's needed, Lawrence. I think that's what's needed in in the churches, um, but also in different countries. Mm. But you said, "Oh, what sparked your mediumship? Was it the spirit world that sparked your mediumship?" And really, uh, it's it's what came first: the medium or the spirit. Um, you know, it's like what came first, the chicken or the egg, but what came first, the spirit world or the medium? And and it's like, and, and when you when you think about it, um, when the time was right, spirit would show themselves, make noises, create phenomena where people couldn't walk around it. Um, Emma Hardinge Britain, all the way back in then, she she experienced mediumship, the Fox sisters experienced mediumship in a physical way, all these knocks and raps and taps where they they actually let them know that there was more to life than just the physical world. And that's what the spirit world did. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it became a movement. And that's why I, uh, we, we had a lovely talk, didn't we, Lawrence, about the movement of spiritualism. But it's like that, and, and that spark of belief that we have about spiritualism, spirits the spirit world that phenomena of spirit is like we we would love to just shout it from the rooftops and let people know oh wouldn't you wouldn't you know that life continues and that there's and there's like a you're you you you're an infinite soul that's never going to die how amazing is that and all these people are going through their struggles in their life and how amazing is that if they could hear they, these words or hear the truth or be ready to hear um the truth you know yeah. Yeah. yeah and again it's times like this um uh, where the world is so different and almost on a daily basis things yeah. are changing consistently uh yeah constantly one of the things i love with the spirit and spiritualism is the consistency of it the message never falters no 
the message never changes. We know we don't suddenly go, oh yeah, but if you start doing this, you'll be one of the ascent, you know. We don't get involved in that. It's just very simple. You do not die. Yeah. You exactly. do not die for the life of you. Yeah, exactly. And going back to my work, the amount of times I've experienced people passing over to the spirit world, amazing moments where I've I've seen them go through the struggle of the last moments. And then afterwards, they'll come and just thank me for all the help that I've given them at the end and all the help that I gave them when they were there. And I, I just think it's amazing and very humbling um, to, be, to be in that position, you know. It's, yeah, it really is. Yeah, it, it, and it is absolutely awesome uh, when that does happen. It's just like, I had a message, one typical sitter, no, no, don't know that, no, sorry, it's not making any sense. Um, about two weeks later, I'm stood there doing the washing up, and I went, oh, my God, I know exactly who they're talking about now. It just all fallen into place. Um, and it was a severely handicapped gentleman, and his wife used to travel regularly on the railways when I worked on them. And if they were on my train, I would always go down, make sure they're all right, get them a drink from the buffet because she was unable to leave him. Uh, and I would do all that. And this but this medium, bless her heart, was relaying all this. I'm going, no, mm. no, don't remember that. No, sorry, you got the wrong one. <laughs> but when the penny dropped, I went, oh, good goodness. You know, yeah. oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. I, I have... Uh, various bees in my bonnet at times. I have thoughts that come in and they seem to obsess me for a while. And it was actually in a conversation with uh, Daniela. Hmm. And I said, I'm very envious of the spiritualists in Europe now. I said, because in my thinking, you are the new pioneers. You mentioned something there about the music. It's more upbeat, different music. Yeah. We have this tradition in the UK, and things in some areas have just got a little bit stinted. Mm. Um, if you, you know, we are seeing new music being played, and please, anybody listening, please do not play Spirit in the Sky anymore, all right? Just stop it, because I've been, <laughs> the last like, six services I've been to, <laughs> and now a piece of music, Spirit in the Sky, and I'm thinking, please, <laughs> find <laughs> another. <laughs> but you've, you've got this golden opportunity now, in my opinion, my humble opinion, that where spiritualism has seen this online explosion, uh, we had a demo fundraiser for the church recently, and probably 80% of uh, those that were joining in were from European countries. So that, that interest and that eagerness is there. So you, you've got this golden chance now to look at the UK and look at what we do well. I'm not slating it. We do do a lot of things really well in our movement in the UK, but also look at the areas where we can improve. And it's always easier to set up something new than to change something that's already established. Yeah, I think with the laws and the bylaws and the uh, the things that need to be abided by um, in churches in in England because it's it's the law, mm. um, it makes it very difficult to rapidly change things. And like you said, the golden opportunity in new countries like uh, Holland, uh, Germany. Um, it's, it is a good way to to be able to bring um, yeah the spirit to people in a, in in, a, in such a lovely way um, in 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 the vein of of spiritualism. Um, it's it's amazing to do, and I think you can do it in many ways. It's like um, every demonstration. I'm like I don't know. I think I think um, coming to England and and doing uh, my my certificates and speaking and demonstrating and uh and the teaching it it changed something in me it made me um made me very humble um about working with spirit and also i used to go to these spiritual spiritual centers in holland and used to go there and i'd just go there right put on a bit of upbeat music 
and do a demonstration like a demonstration. And after going through um, the training and, and, and seeing how spiritual churches work, I was like, okay, well, we'll play a bit of music and we'll give them a bit of inspiration and then mm. we'll do some demonstrating. Yeah. And so it it started to change the way that I was working. And sometimes I'll, I'll repeat that um, inspirational words in the middle of a demonstration as well. Um, so in that way, you're still uplifting everyone. Um, so yeah, it's certainly it's certainly changing. It's um, it's exciting uh, to be to be a part of it. Brilliant, yeah. And it is in the inspirational world uh, words or the philosophy or the address, as we yeah. uh, terminology wherever yeah. wherever you are, it changes. Um, <clears throat> alongside the seed of a well-delivered message where the recipient will hopefully be leaving that church or center thinking, how does that work? How do they know this? Yeah. But also in that philosophy, I always believe, you know, the philosophy should give people that strength, that courage and that conviction uh, to walk out of any doors and face today's world exactly with a little bit more foresight a little bit more understanding a little bit more depth and a lot less fear exactly it's such it's such good to to bring it, bring philosophy that's that's to do with today's world um, yeah. and to be around today's world um, and not to avoid um, what's going on but yet to just embrace what's going on and 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 help people feel a little bit a little bit stronger a little bit more hope um and i think that's a wonderful thing to do with philosophy it is it is the, the best yeah. um I've, I've i it's all very public this is not a secret i have this bromance that blossomed uh with jack Heckhart from denmark uh, we met online and his lovely partner lola and before long, they actually turned up at the doors of the church physical, which was just amazing. And in my talks with him, he runs the Danish Spiritual Association up there. And he's saying one of the big things that they uh, work with is <clears throat> a lot of the thinking is uh, based on psychic readings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's been a lot of work and a lot of progress made on differentiating. I mean, it used to be, uh, I remember in some of my old circles being berated by the circle leader of that psychic, that's not good enough. <laughs> you know, yeah. and it was always the psychic was the dirty word. I'm really pleased to see that now psychism is becoming much more acceptable. But we need still just to keep on with this message of the difference. We're not saying oh, that's bad, that's good. But we're just saying this is that ability of you, of your spirit, but this is the other ability of the other world stepping in. Have you found that uh, when you started over there that this line between the two, mediumship and psychism, was quite pronounced or not understood? In the beginning, there was a lot of psychism. There was a lot of um, psychic things, like they do candle readings, um, flower readings. Um, ribbons was something from England, but they, they did card readings, um, flower readings, candle readings. Uh, if you wrote your name on a bit of paper and then um, put it, folded it up, then they do that. They do a raffle ticket readings. So a lot of it was was through. Um, objects and that's how mediumship used to be and i remember going to demonstrations of what i thought was mediumship back at back in the when i was in my investigating stage and they were doing all these sort of different things which was really interesting um and since then since there's been a lot of um mediums going to the alpha findlay college training in the alpha findlay college coming back and and basically teaching students that there's a difference between the psychism and the mediumship. Uh, I mean, I love to demonstrate and I love to show people 
um, the difference is when I'm demonstrating, I'll mention I'm getting all this information from your father, and then uh, all of a sudden I'll be, but as, as I'm standing here, I do feel I need to talk to you about this, and this is from me as the medium. Yeah. And so it's it's really it's really nice to to demonstrate that. Uh, not only in um, in a demonstrating style, but also um, to demonstrate it in in a teaching in a teaching uh, way as well. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've found here I don't advertise um, to undertake private sittings, but I just over the last few months there has been quite hmm. uh, a demand of them coming in, and I found even in those that it shifts wildly. Uh, I did three on three consecutive days. Mm. The first one was pure mediumship, pure evidence, communication. The second was a mixture of mediumship and psychism. But the third one was reliant on psychism mainly, but there was that presence of spirit just to reiterate a few of the subjects. Yeah, And each sitting was really well received by the sitter because that's what they needed exactly and i thought that is so interesting lawrence get off your soapbox you know you're not here to please yourself you're here for that sitter yeah um and what their needs are of the day so, so yeah I like, the way, I like the way you mentioned that because i think mediums out there people learning they're like they struggle. Oh, I need to get information from the spirit world. I need to get the information from the spirit world. And they keep checking the information and it's about the sitter. And they're like, no, um, something's going wrong. And they start, they start um, complaining about their mediumship because they're not, they're not getting the, the information from the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And and I say, but what if you, why don't you just swap and then just let that information flow that you say, right, okay, I'm getting this information about you. And then once that's out of the way, then then the spirit then it's open to the spirit world to bring something new in, and it's learning the difference. I mean, um, I, I love doing what I call um, with, with students. I say, right, we're going to do um, a psychic reading uh, for one person and a mediumistic reading for another person at the same time. Ooh. And, um, and I, I, do a little, I make it into a little game and it's a little chair game that when you're connecting with the spirit world, you got to move to the spirit world. And when you're connecting to the to the sitter, you're, you're moving towards the sitter. And it's really good. It's really fun to do. Um, yeah. And it brings, it brings across the message of, yeah, even, even uh, the psychic information that you can bring through for people is just as important as well as the mediumship. But it's also learning to know the difference yeah. because I've seen so many mediums work and I'm not like, Ooh, uh, I mean, it's good, but it's psychic and you can feel it because when someone's connecting to the spirit world, there's like a, it, it's like, it's, it's electric, it's magic. It's like this, Oh, wow. Isn't this great? You know, it's like a, the, the energy's there. And then when they've dipped into the psychic and you, and you see them working, you can see the energy's moving forward to the sitter uh, or the recipient, and you can also see and feel that the energy's dropped. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's not as exciting. It's suddenly become um, a different, a different level. So, um, and then, then they they think they're working mediumistically, when really they're working psychically. So yeah. it's nice to be able to to teach people to work both ways and and to know the difference about both ways. Yeah, it, it is. It is very important that we teach that, and very important too that we encourage people to be honest about yeah. uh, how we're working. I, when I'm on the psychic level, I call it a very functional energy. So yeah. I like the way you just said you can feel the energy drop because it does become a functional energy. But when I'm within the presence of the other world, it's a very inspirational energy. Mm. Uh, words are falling out of my mouth and queuing up behind and I just there is no control there and I don't want the control I want to let them speak exactly um but you know, we are working for that sitter and it is what that sitter needs yeah meeting the needs of the sitter but also meeting the needs of the spirit world it's something that yeah. Paul Jacobs teaches very very well um very well um 
a great a great teacher someone that's taught me in in the past as well but he um he teaches that very very well meeting the needs is uh, one of his weeks at the arthur finley college so Brilliant. anyone interested <laughs> and paul is with us here in paul next year oh. well there you go what a treat i know I'm, I'm very lucky bunny i get to meet all these wonderful wonderful people excuse me um yeah so really looking forward to that but the as i said <clears throat> you know we are in this world today of trouble mm -hmm. you know every time if you still watch the news and things like that it's never good yeah. uh our bills everything every facet of our life is just getting hit again yeah. but of course you know, the spirit world respond to that yeah. and this is the amazing thing and i love when you said about you know you, you feel that energy and when you get that true mediumistic connection uh yeah. even in a church environment or a center environment a group environment that presence is felt and quite often not just by the sitter but no. those around exactly it's um the whole church yeah, yeah. We had a very emotive um, connection made here a little while back. And not only did the sitter have tears in their eyes, but several people around them mm. as well had those tears. And they all said when they came out, oh, my God, you could feel that. And said, so, yeah, this, this is what we do. This is the magic yeah. that we bring. It you really is. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's definitely the the most magical thing. I think is that feeling where you can feel the mediums in connection. When they connect to the right recipient, you just feel the energy just go like that, yeah. and then everyone reacts to it. And they're like, "Oh, isn't that amazing? That 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 phenomena. That great. I love that word. Um, yeah. but that that can take place, um, and it's like a reunion of souls um, at that moment, and everyone can witness it." in a spiritualist church um or a demonstration of mediumship and it's, it's really just fascinating um yeah so i always I, what i love what I love about it it's a bit like forrest gump when he's opening his chocolates he says he loves his box of chocolates because you never know what, you, what you're gonna get and it's the same with mediumship in the spirit world and you work as a medium you never know what's going to yeah. come through you never know what's going to be good evidence you're never going to know what's going to be it just it it just evolves um or at the moment in in that split second that it the energy moves through the medium at that time it's indeed that's the magic indeed. that's the magic of it yeah and that word is very important as well because this is getting more and more airtime uh, about energy yeah and it's working with and understanding the energy you know if i get up on the rostrum and i'm going to be I've just had a terrible day. I've had a huge row with somebody. My trousers no longer fit because I'm too fat now. And my cooking is a disaster. Hmm. It ain't going to be that good, is it? <laughs> because no. I just brought that shroud with yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we're trying to relay that. I, to people say here in the church at Paul, they say it feels wonderful in here. And I said, yeah, because I'm quite hot on the energies. Yeah. Uh, I'm always trying to be uplifting, upbeat. The music is upbeat, uplifting. Mm. I will also, if we have any dissent going on, if there's anything going on, I will go in and just go, okay, what's going on? We need to talk about this. Because sadly, you do see it uh, mm. in places where you get the nip, 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 nip going mm. on in the background, and you walk in and it's present. Mm. You know, if love can be present, then so can any other emotion. Exactly. And something I'm very keen to get people to understand. You know, you are what you create. Um, so like every, yeah. single, every single person in a congregation or a, a, in a demonstration, um, they all bring their own presence and energy with yep. them, and that all contributes to the to the 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 way that a mediumship or a, a spiritual church can do their their, their divine services it's all a part of the magic that can take place now if you've got people in the back or even in, maybe in the front uttering away 
they're not being present or they're, they're, they're looking at the telephones or um, they're not being present. And so it's like, just imagine if we were going to a restaurant to have like a five-star deluxe meal and then we'd only eat like a tenth of it because we're busy doing something else, we'd go home hungry, wouldn't we? So yep. if we go into a spiritualist church or, 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 a, or a demonstration of mediumship to, to really fully enjoy every moment of it and to be present, is it, there is an art to it. But if people did it, then they'd, they'd see experience and, and understand a lot more about how mediumship works and also about how how the, the spiritualism uh, moves through them or what, what part they are. Because I love the way First Nations um, from Canada, when I went, when I was doing my mediumship there, I met a chief there and he said to me, um, everybody is medicine. And I said, what, what do you mean? He said, everyone brings the, their energy. When we're talking about energy. Yeah. That is the medicine that's needed. And it may be, you know, some medicine doesn't taste good, does it? You might meet someone, a yeah. colleague or something, you've got to work with them and say, oh, God, I've got to work with them. But that's the medicine that you feel, oh, this is the medicine I don't like. It doesn't taste good. But they're still, their energy is medicine for you, for it is then to turn inwards and feel, what, what do I need to shift within me? to feel comfortable in this situation. Uh, uh, and that's when we have progression um, of our soul. If we're in denial, we'll go, no, I just won't work with them. You know, they, they, they bring my energy down or uh, I'll yeah. never do them. Or, you know, it's a very, it's very, um, it's, it's something that happens quite a lot now. People will just say, oh, that's it. I'll just, you know, I'll just block them or won't talk to them anymore because they're, they're not in the right energy. And I feel really, um, when we're, when we're working with presence and, and being present in a, in a spiritual demonstration or, or in a spiritualist church or or even just doing spiritual readings, to be present. And if, if the sitter is present as well or, uh, or the congregation, um, we become like this wonderful soup of medicine that is good for all of us. And that, because I used to be a chef, you see, so that was in my, in my earlier years. So I like to relate to to food things, um, but it's it's amazing um, the art of being present. Uh, I think that's something we all need to 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 learn uh, and to bring into our congregations, churches, and spiritual demonstrations. Indeed. Indeed, and as we progress on our mediumship path, no matter how that expresses itself, that awareness, you know, if I go for a walk anywhere, I'm not just walking there, you know, thinking I've got to get there and go, go and do that. I will walk and try and take in and acknowledge everything that I see yeah. because that is building the experience up and this is building the toolbox for, in fact, this is... I go to the gym now. <laughs> I can see. Yeah. My, <laughs> my favorite machine is the chocolate machine. Anyway. <laughs> but on the, on the cycle, uh, you can put a video on. And it's all these different places that they could put on the TV screen. And I was halfway for a communication. I went, I'm in San Francisco. I know that because I'm looking at the Bay Bridge here. And I know mm. that there's this um, marina there. And this gentleman was and they were going, yeah, yeah, that's right. And it's only because I was looking at this TV screen. I'm going, oh, that's what the Golden Gate Bridge looks like. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was so high and didn't realize it went back that far and things. Yeah. But it, having that awareness and taking things in. Yeah. And it does make you realize how insular our thinking used to be. Exactly. We could walk down the road, do shopping, go and post some letters, go, go to the bank, come back, and you say, what did you see? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You won't have that memory. You won't have that thought, that connection with things. Oh, no. um, and it's the same within our churches, centres, demonstrations, whatever. Yeah. You know, just be aware of what's going and not sitting there 
uh, waiting for a message, yeah. not only engaging when you personally are being spoken to. I always say, you know, clear response from the sitters. This may be your message, but it could be somebody else's evidence. Because yeah. if somebody is sitting there and investigating what we do, and they are listening, they are present yeah. in that moment, and they're hearing yes, 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 and sometimes to fantastic things, not the mundane. Yeah, but that is going to register with those people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's um, it's like the phenomena of mediumship and the demonstrating of it, and um, the words that can be shared. It, it can it can mean so much to others that are investigating it, and they'll come in and they'll watch. Uh, and I've, I'm sure you've had this happen as well. People come in and they're very skeptical, and they're sitting at the back, they've got their arms folded, and um, they're probably going to be the first or second person that's going to get a link. Um, so they get they're getting a, a contact from the spirit world, and all of a sudden, those arms are not folded at the end of it, and they've suddenly got more research to do on. No, that was. That was something I, I that's opened a door that I need to look into, and I think that's that's what it's all about. You know, it's all about that opening doors for people to a, to to more. You yeah, know. yeah. I I petition people regularly at Paul Church, and just say, you know, when you have that communication, when you have that level of evidence, what does that mean? I, I love that phrase, the message of the message. Yeah. What is that saying? You know, because if this person, whatever the relationship is to you, has gone through that process of that which we call death, yeah, but is here and vibrant and intelligent and engaging and aware of what's going on, what does your path hold for you? Exactly. What does that mean to you? I think really, and what I've noticed, I mean, um, in mediumship is we we are learning from from the spirit world more and more, yeah. and it's, and it's when we like when you're first starting out and you're doing mediumship, you're like, I have to do it a certain way because it feels comfortable. For me, it was it was pictures. I used to be a fax machine. I used to get loads and loads of pictures. It was all evidence, and I thought it was fantastic. And I thought that's how mediumship worked. And it wasn't uh, until through development and understanding the presence of the spirit world where I realized it's not it's not about being just the picture person. It's actually about the presence of spirit. And so spirit world, the spirit world are always, if we're open, they're always open to bringing through more um, information in different ways, uh, energetically, um, uh, they like to play with electrics, like they were playing with my microphone today. But they also like to play with lights. So the last demonstration I did in in, um, in Scotland, the the lights all of a sudden the the lights went out, um, and then bang on ten o'clock when the demonstration was over, the lights went out then as well, and they left one light on. And I was like, you know, it reminded me of that song, um, "One Light in the Darkness" by um, I, can't, I can't remember who it was, but. It was a beautiful song, One Light in the Dark. It's going to have to, you might have to do a little search on that. I think, <laughs> um, it was actually in a group with Mavis Patilla, and she, she played that song to me. I thought, isn't it amazing? One Light in the Darkness that really, that, that is, that's us. And, and the ability to shine that light is what, what we can do um, in this world. Um, and and so it's a, it's a lovely song where more people... Oh, or is one voice? Sorry, one voice in the in the dark. I think it's one voice in the dark. Right. Um, but it's it's that's the amazing thing. You think also oh, the spirit world can do this now. They can turn the lights off and leave one on. Um, and so uh, these things, it's it's suddenly becoming accepting. I mean, um, going with what the spirit world give you. Um, is the evolution of mediumship. I mean, we're never going to change the six senses, but um, apart from what I'm realizing the spirit world are bringing in now, is so it's, it's quite new, is they're letting us, like, be aware of their consciousness, uh, which 
isn't pictures. Um, it may not be a feeling. It may it may not be what you're hearing, but it's actually when you listen very softly, it's like you can almost feel them standing next to you, and then you're just relaying that consciousness. Yeah. From from the spirit world, which um, it's it's certainly the way I feel that the mediumship is certainly evolving um, in that way. And the more that we open up to possibilities within our six senses, um, and I know some people will say there's nine senses or probably even more senses. There's always another sense being invented, but really. Um, it's about being open to whatever the way that the spirit worlds um, communicate with you. Um, they might want to try something new today. So if I was the old Jason who used to just do the pictures, I'd just be the picture man, um, which was really great back then. And it got me yes, it is, and it was evidence. But that spark that we were talking about when, when you started, Lawrence, was that spark that's the ignition that's that's what really moves us to change um in mediumship and when we can release the control of how we would like the information mm. then we open the possibilities from the spirit it can be scary but then you open to the possibilities of how the spirit world can work with you yeah it's always a worrying phrase when i hear it from students and so i want and you just think, mm, careful, because <laughs> you, you've just put barriers up. Yeah, exactly. Instead of yeah. saying, let's go yeah. for it. My, yeah. my saying in my head when I'm getting into the dem mode is, yeah. right, let's party. Exactly. And that's my little mantra to the spirit yeah. world, and they know from that, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't sit there with my checklist. I want name, age, sex, height, yeah. relationship, blah, 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 blah. Because there's so much more. Yeah. There is so much more, that presence of that person and being that person. Exactly. Instead of saying, you know, oh, they're telling me this. Is that, oh, well, I'm looking out now of my window and I'm looking across vast green fields behind me. You know, because you're there. You are there. You are one with that presence. And it's beautiful yeah. but i think <clears throat> really interesting what you're saying about what we're seeing now uh, and again mm -hmm. regarding the phenomena of uh, mediumship and no matter what form of expression that takes is because we've dropped our barriers yeah i always, i've said this a few times i know you can see the church behind me yeah and it used to be chairs either side flat facing forward central aisles classic church set out yeah when uh 2020 arrived before things overtook everybody you knew something was wrong so i, I changed the layout of the chairs i curved them round. i put in uh two aisles rather than one so just giving people that little bit of space and i always remember this one person said well, that's not going to work now, is it? I said, what? Well, spirit can't get across that gap. You know, it's like a two-foot gap. And I'm thinking, well, spirit can't get across a two-foot gap, love. I mean, how the hell do they manage to get all the way from heaven? To, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it just, you know, it's just very much the thinking because we, we thought orthodoxly uh, and we thought very restrictive. You know, if you teach your dog to sit up and beg for one type of biscuit is only ever going to sit up and beg for one type of biscuit if you teach your dog to play and go and find biscuits it's going to be all over the place finding all sorts of things exactly you know so we, we're dropping our back i'm talking to you tonight you are over there in germany uh again we're seeing the online demonstrations globally mm. I, I did it when we were in one of the lockdowns i did it just to see if it could do it and we had a service with somebody from uh iceland somebody from norway somebody from scotland uh i was sharing here in the uk then over to madeira and down to australia and so, it all worked a whole service just came together and i'm just like this is great yeah. <laughs> 
because I'm a kid. Big kid. But this is what, you know, we, the spirit world is unlimited potential. Mm. So let's not limit it. Let us not limit it. That is what I say. Totally Um, agree. Yeah. Have your grounding. Have your grounding in the basics of the communication. The medium's mantra, do no harm. Uh, Evidential bases. Everything. This is one of my big passions with spiritualism because every facet of every type of mediumship has an evidential basis. Our philosophy will resonate with us. When you see somebody who is particularly gifted with their philosophy, I love looking out of the congregation and over Mm. two-thirds will be sat there with their eyes closed. Mm. They're not asleep, but they're really taking it in. They're really taking it in. And that is evidential Mm. to me. That is evidential that the presence of those words, of that school of thought, Mm. is making its presence felt. Our healing mediums, time and time again, you, we, you know. All right, we don't see the miracles that we want, but we do see that care and assistance and healing has been given in accordance to the needs. And then, mm. obviously, with our evidential mediumship. So, you know, we need to say to spirit and I saw one thing being demonstrated by two different people and it was about the you know the voice recorders that they use they scan up and down the radio waves yeah uh the frank's box i think it's called mm-hmm. and constantly scan up and down radio waves and you can interact in a conversation with it and i saw it demonstrated once and it was a little bit fey a little bit light-hearted the way it was done but then i saw another practitioner do it and really earnestly put down the intent and rent about it in a very very methodical and professional manager but manner and the results were amazing i was just sat there gobsmacked i'm going wow Mm. wow that's just wow that is that is evidential they had the same name repeated three times i'm just going wow (laughs) Mm. that's good yeah so yeah we need to um yeah relax our barriers and just say Mm. to the spirit what can what can we do what can we do what can we go for uh and again like you say with the uh, electronics Everyone's got a mobile phone now. Yeah. So is that going to be the new form of direct voice that on your voice recorder on your phone, um, there could be a message? You never know. You never know. Mm. I know the spirit world used to play with my Ziri on my telephone, and I'd just be having a conversation with someone, and it would just it would go off. It would just really would just start up and start talking. So I have to disable disable it. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant, 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 brilliant. Jason, this hour has flown by. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, really interesting. And we look forward to seeing you at Paul at some time in the future when everything aligns. But it will happen because I cannot not have you now oh, over wow. here <laughs> it would be my pleasure if we can get it in uh, into a line lawrence it would be my pleasure yeah yeah you're a very very busy man i know that uh absolutely fine it will happen it will happen i'm just going back to a message here from the lovely moira hawkins good evening moira um oh yes m- most people may know jeanette abbott uh if you don't there's tim abbott is well known for his trance. Jeanette is his lovely wife. I have met her. They stayed here for a weekend. uh, And we had hours of fun. (laughs) Seriously, they're they're absolutely lovely. Um, Jeanette's health is in a very poor way at the moment. So 
you've probably seen this on Facebook. If you have not, please, if you have healing books or just sit mm. and just send out those thoughts for healing for Jeanette at this time because they're so sorely in need. And don't forget Tim and their wonderful daughter Lucy as well because it's not just the one person going through this time. Uh, is the whole family are affected. So, yeah, lots of love out to you, Jeanette. You're a lovely, lovely lady. Um, yeah, all the best. All the best, my darling. Yeah, really are. I, I've met Tim about myself um, and Jeanette uh, as well. And they even demonstrated together in, in many churches and yeah. uh, always been doing fantastic work for Spirit. Um, yeah. So, and for those that don't know uh, how to heal, I mean, just um sending your love and intention um to Jeanette Abbott um will will the raise raise her her spirits and energy and I'm sure it will raise the the family's spirit and energy as well yeah that's what I always say to people you know you don't have to train to be a healer everybody can express a love yeah and that is healing yeah because everything then that is done in that energy is in the art of healing so yeah big thoughts out to you all all of you tim and lucy and jeanette yeah. herself jason thank you sir thank you thank you thank you i always have to remember you're an hour ahead over there so i can quite happily waffle on for england but then I'm just thinking, well, it's getting to nine o'clock at night over there. Leave them alone, Lawrence. Let them, <laughs> let them come down before they go to bed. Yeah. Wonderful discussion tonight. Thank you. It's just been sheer joy talking with you tonight. And I hope you've enjoyed it as well, sir. I have. I've really enjoyed talking to, to you, Lawrence. And I hope everyone that's been watching has been enjoyed it as well. And yeah, it's you know, it's it's just fantastic to share. And um, I think that's that's what it's all about. It's just sharing whatever knowledge we can with each other and and having these conversations. So so well done, Lawrence, for continuing this and 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 you know bringing it out to the to the people. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's so important because um, oh, lovely Monique, saying hello, darling. <laughs> um, you know, even in these discussions, even if you disagree with what's being said, that's fine. You know, do you know what the element of debate has been lost a little bit? Yeah. But to not agree with what's being said is great because it actually makes you examine what your thoughts are. Exactly. Or it may reinforce thoughts that you didn't really understand or realize you had. And this is the wonder and the beauty of um, this much widely ex more accepted form of conversation and debate. You know, you know what, I'm not blowing my trumpet or anything, but I would rather spend an hour on here than watching Strictly or Get Me Out of the Whatever It Is Jungle and all that nonsense. <laughs> because you come away with food for thought. Food for thought, which is always good. Anyway, sir, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a sheer joy. Thank you, everybody, uh, whether you've been watching us live tonight or watching us on the wonderful ability to catch up later. Thank yeah. you for your presence. Tomorrow, the church will be streaming its service as normal at 11 a.m. on GMT. We have a Reverend Ashley Oliver, not a Reverend, the Reverend Ashley Oliver, who's a beautiful lady, and she has taken us on a journey through the Advent Sundays in December. So it was wonderful because last week people were saying, oh, I can't wait for next Sunday. And I thought, well, this is nice. This story is unfolding. So oh, wow. she'll be taking us on this journey through the meaning of the different Advent Sundays. And then we have the wonderful Phyllis Rumney, CSNU, who will be sharing philosophy and demonstrating evidential mediumship. So that is live on Facebook and our YouTube channel, 11 a.m. GMT tomorrow. In the meantime, Jason, you have, you're an act. Do you know what? I see why people love you because you are, you, you're lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you seriously, you're such a lovely man. Oh, thank you. you. And fingers crossed when I'm working in Holland next year that we can actually meet up. 
That would be nice. I'm that sure. Would be amazing. And uh, the lovely Monique Packer has said that she may well join in then. Well, that'd be good, wouldn't it? I'd be yeah. better make that at the end of my training weekend <laughs> because I, I think one or two schnapps may be involved. Probably uh, <laughs> more than like, more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, it's been a sheer joy. Thank you, Jason, so much for what you brought to us tonight. It's been absolutely beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. And we wish you a very safe, pleasant, warm and secure night. We're on the south coast and we're getting battered at the moment a little bit down here. So wherever you are, I hope uh, the weather is kinder to you. Good night, everybody. Good night.